Do you like battles ending extremely quickly, at least according to in-game timers, and enjoy stunlocking enemies, stopping them from moving and being able to accomplish anything? Fairy might be the character for you, at least based on her current optimal playstyle. As of right now, Fairy is THE prime Skybound art bot, being able to build gauge and use SBAs faster than any other character in the game. Truth be told, I feel she may be one of the three characters in the game who needs a fundamental rebalance on her abilities and numbers simply because of her current best playstyle and intended playstyle feeling fairly opposed, and playing Fairy as intended does not feel nearly as rewarding and worth it on the current patch. With that in mind, I will be discussing why this is, and also why I do think her current place in the meta is still interesting and fairly fun. It's possible a future patch could invalidate some of this, but for now, in this video I want to discuss Fairy, discuss general playstyle and setup, talk about some strengths and weaknesses, and showcase some practical use in harder raid fights. If you enjoy guide content on this game, RPGs in general, and especially Xenoblade, and are interested in seeing more since I do plan to cover everyone in this game, as well as future release content on Relink, please be sure to subscribe to the channel because it does help me out so much, and I will love you forever. Let's get into it. So let's start with the basics here. At first glance, Fairy has a couple of unique mechanics, most notably the pet gauge. By performing attacks or using certain skills, Fairy will summon up to four pets at a time with each pet granting bonuses to Fairy as well as continuously attacking her target. Your first two pets will both occupy the first slot of the three slots that you have if you are worried about only seeing three. Each pet summoned gives a 10% bonus to your attack and defense, and as Fairy, you will likely want to keep your pets active as much as you can. Pets will not trigger effects like supplementary damage, sadly, but it can still be a boost to have them active and get useful buffs out of them. Her first support skill tells you one of the ways to summon her pets, and it's basically just tied to her main combo. Essentially, you have a combo attack that does three attacks in a row, and if you hold down the attack button on either of these three attacks at any point during your standard three-button combo, hitting this charge attack will summon one of her pets. And hitting all three of these charge attacks will summon all of her pets, so you can have them all active. This is probably the most basic way to summon her pets, but probably not the method you will be using super often, given that link attacks will fully summon your pets, and certain skills will also summon all of your pets immediately, making them more efficient ways of summoning. But this is a method to keep in mind if you do need it. Her second support skill says that her Y attacks will deal more damage based on how many pets are on the battlefield, which brings me to the discussion on Onslaught and why this is typically not a good move. So by holding down the Y button, or what is generally the charge attack or combo finisher button for other characters, Fairy will use Onslaught, which is basically an area of effect attack that will have all of her pets attack the enemy at once. After 5 seconds, the attack will automatically stop and all of her pets will disappear after one final attack, effectively ending their current summoning. This will clear all the slots in your pet gauge as well. So the good news about this move is that it deals high stun damage and can be an okay way to rush link attacks, which will give you your pets again. The bad news is basically everything else. Using this will prematurely end any attacks or skills that are currently using your pets. You can miss damage if you're too close when using the attack. And just in general, the negatives of this ability will usually will result in it being a loss to your total DPS and utility if you aren't immediately charging into another Link attack as a way to resummon your pets instantly. And this is kind of where the fundamental balancing problem for Fairy comes from, because this feels like one of the intended strategies with the character, but it's rarely worth doing over what is actually optimal. So with that in mind, what exactly is optimal for Fairy? Well, fortunately for Fairy, she has another fantastic and very viable option, making her one of the most useful characters in the game currently the role of the SBA spammer. So what Fairy does have going for her is that her jump slash launch attack and her aerial finisher are both pretty strong moves. Basically, you can press jump plus attack at the same time to do a launch attack and immediately press Y or your finisher button to do a finisher. The launch attack has a low modifier, but if you're able to cap the attack, it can do the same damage as two normal attacks very quickly. And the aerial finisher has the same multipliers normal attacks, but can hit three times incredibly quickly meaning you can get five attacks with just two buttons in an extremely short period of time, all while your pets remain active and continue attacking enemies for you also. This has a much higher DPS than using Onslaught at all, with Fairy players estimating over 7 million more damage in a 60 second window just for spamming your jump attacks. The craziest part of this, it also builds SBA gauge at an insane rate, which eclipses basically every other character in the game, making her one of the best characters for building SBA gauge, stunning bosses by using SBA attacks, and supporting the team with a strategy to have some of the fastest and easiest fights in the entire game, since of course using SBA gives your other party members 10%, you're also able to build it while they use their SBAs, it's a really, really effective strategy for just unlocking enemies very, very efficiently. Launch Slam is basically your go-to combo as Fairy, and way better to use in almost every situation than Onslaught or any of your other combinations if you already have your pets active, and it can be very satisfying to build up that quick SBA to make farming very easy on a number of enemies. So because of where her current damage caps are and how Onslaught works, and with how ridiculously quick she can build SBA, 
Her Launch Slam is just significantly better to use right now to take advantage of her kit. That means you want to be maximizing SBA usage and pet uptime as the primary way to support your team, and all setup and strategy will revolve around that as your ideal gameplay loop. We'll talk more about other gameplay aspects in other sections, so let's get into setup now. So for the weapon, I am running exactly what you expect here. The Terminus weapon, it's just the simply best weapon in the entire game with Catastrophe Bonus Effect giving you even higher damage cap, giving you a bunch of extra attack as long as you're below 45,000 health, and giving the very useful Sigil Booster trait as well. Very nice effect to have. The uh, imbue on it isn't anything super special this time around. It just ensures I had 100% crit rate with only one critical hit rate booster this time around since I have the overmasteries to do that. And mainly I have it for the auto revive effect just as an extra kind of supportive way to stay alive if I need it. So that's just kind of why I have it because I'm not running Potion Hoarder on this specific setup. So uh, having that extra revive is pretty nice to have just in case I mess up or can't end fights super quickly. But if you're ending fights quickly, you don't need Potion Hoarder nearly as much, although Potion Hoarder is still a really good trait. So still something you might want to run depending on the situation. Phantasm's Concord. This is the unique trait of Fairy that I am running. This basically allows your pets to deal more damage, and that's always going to be pretty good because uh, that allows them to deal a little bit more damage in all their attacks and also grants uh, debuffs. That's going to be the main thing here. You can inflict uh, t attack down 20% and defense down 20% for 10 seconds, 25% uh, of the time when your pets attack. Pretty easy to keep that up at all time with how often your pets are attacking as long as you're not using Onslaught and as long as you're just keeping them active as much as possible and spamming those jump attacks. So this is a really, unique, really good unique sigil effect to have. Her other unique sigil effect is not nearly as good, it just increases the damage cap of Onslaught. We've already kind of discussed that Onslaught is not very good as a uh, ability to use, so uh, don't really recommend using that in current level play as of right now, sadly. The bonus trait on it is damage cap. This allows me to run one less damage cap sigil. It's an orange trait though, so it doesn't really make that much of a difference to have it here or not, but it does allow me to change my setup a little bit to uh, kind of optimize it just a little bit more at the very least, so that's nice as an effect to have. I have my other three damage cap sigils to make sure I'm hitting the absolute maximum on damage cap, so I'm doing as much damage as possible. Even on a character like Fairy, who doesn't do the most damage, it is nice to be able to hit all those damage caps and do as much damage as you can with the character anyway. The sub-traits on them are two quick cooldowns and an uplift. So quick cooldowns just really nice to have in general, because the uh, more quick cooldown I have, the more I can use my abilities to summon my pets more often if I ever lose my pets or... or I mean, an ability where I don't have my pets and just want to summon them very back very quickly. Having pets up also builds your SB up a little bit faster when they attack and when you can use skills that use them as well, so that's useful. And then we have Uplift. This is probably the best sub-trade in the game on Fairy as far as what you can possibly run because it builds your SBA gauge gain even faster. You're able to use SBA even more often. You're able to stun lock enemies very early on into fights and uh, kind of skip a lot of phases in fights, which is really useful to have. And uh, just in general, you're able to use even more SBAs. You're able to stun lock enemies more. Absolutely fantastic effect on a character like Fairy who already builds that bar incredibly quickly. This just increases that and magnifies that even further. So absolutely be running Uplift if you can fit it into your slots because it's just one of the absolute best effects that you can have. I've got my two supplementary damages. Ideally, I can run three if I had a better uh, sub-trait setups or anything like that, but this is just kind of the best I can do for now as far as what I wanted to do here. Maybe I could replace Link together, but it has an Uplift trait on it, and I really wanted to keep that Uplift trait. And Link Together is still really nice to do more Link Attack damage and build up Link Gauge further to act even as more of a supportive uh, team option for your team. So Chain Burst damage, which you're doing a lot with Fairy. Uh, SBA damage, which you're doing a lot with Fairy. You get a lot of benefit out of Link, Link Together just in general, so I do, do still like that as well. Then I have a Tyranny. This has uh, Guts attached to it, I believe, as the sub-trait. So Guts helps me live 1 HP no matter what if I get hit by something. That's just nice to have, especially when I'm not running Potion Hoarder, just as an extra safety net here. So that's pretty nice as an effect to have. And of course, Tyranny boosts your attack by 36% at the cost of 20% max HP, so you're able to get a lot of benefit out of the attack boost from that to make sure you're hitting caps on your launch attacks, which are a little bit hard to hit caps on, so that's just the uh, benefit of that. Combo Booster also offers me my last uplift and also is just the guarantee, basically, along with the stamina on the critical hit rate to ensure that I'm hitting the caps on everything that I need to hit caps on. This might be just a little bit overkill here, but it does guarantee that I'm always hitting those damage caps, so that is nice to have. The stamina boost is 51%, combo booster stacks up pretty quickly with all the attacks you're doing, and uh, obviously uplift is the main source and benefit of all of this as well. If I had to uplift on supplementary damage, I could probably ditch one of these damage boosters and uh, probably still hit caps depending on the team setup and uh, if I'm getting my defense down debuffs all the time and stuff like that, but... Just in general, it is nice to have, and uh, just guarantee that. Make sure I'm getting the uplift procs. Uh, having Guts is nice as well on Tyranny, so able to kind of max out these these important traits here to get the most benefit out of them as I can. I only need one critical hit rate 5 up in my current setup to 100% critical hit rate to maximize damage there and make sure I'm hitting all the damage there. 
And then finally, I have Aegis. This comes with a quick cooldown as well to make sure I'm maxing out my skill cooldown so I can summon pets more often. Now, I'm not running Cascade on this current set. There's probably a way to fit it in, and it could still be beneficial for skill cooldown as well, but uh, I haven't really noticed that I really need it that much. I think Uplift and Quick Cooldown are more important in this specific case, but Cascade could still be something worth running. And Aegis is just nice to have to uh, make sure I'm hitting over 40,000 health, make sure I'm not dying in one hit since I'm running Tyranny, but uh, definitely possible to possibly replace Tyranny and Aegis with a couple other options as well here to... Uh, uh, maybe do some more damage with more supplementary damage or add some more defensive sub traits like Potion Hoarder or something like that. But main things, max out Uplift, max out Quick Cooldown. Those are probably the main things you're going to want to do. And make sure you got your damage caps maxed and doing as much damage as you can also. So that should cover it. Basically for Sigil setup there, not really too complex with Fairy all around. Uplift is the most important thing, as I've said. Let's take a look at her skills really quickly. These are probably the four general skills I would recommend running most of the time, especially for the more general SBA builder setup here because it just gives you the best mix of keeping your pet up time and uh, kind of supporting your damage and your team. Although there's some other support skills she has as well, which can be useful depending on the situation. we got Umlauf. I don't know if you pronounce it that way, but this is a nice skill to have because it grants a free stout heart, meaning you can spam your jump attacks with a pretty much impunity and also kind of summons a damaging spirit orb from one of your pets around you that does a decent amount of damage, acts as a nice DPS increase, and uh, it grants stout heart, which is really nice as an effect to have, so you can keep spamming and keep spamming... Uh, your jump attacks so you can build SBA faster. You don't have to be interrupted by damage. And as long as you've got a decent amount of healing, you should be fine. And even then, you might still be able to avoid attacks without too much issue. But it is nice to have that stout heart effect. You could even combine this with uh, steel nerves, maybe as a sub trade effect as well, if you really want to. But I don't really think it's necessary with how fast you can end fights anyway. But it is something to keep in mind. Purge Spirit is one of your absolute... Uh, most important skills here. It's not going to be the most damage compared to a different skill that summons all of your pets. But it is a skill that summons all of your pets at once, which is nice to have. Just immediately get them out, immediately start having them do damage, and uh, just make sure they're on the field and active at all times to uh, give you the buffs and uh, make sure they are doing damage to the enemy and helping build that SBA gauge. So, nice effect to have. Just a generally useful skill for the type of playstyle the fairy currently has. Straith, this is probably your best skill. This is basically an even better version of Purge Spirit, where it will summon all of your spirits at once extremely quickly. You can immediately roll cancel out of this, and it'll still summon the pets, and they'll still attack... And they'll do a lot of damage when they're summoned with this ability as well. So this is probably your best skill just in general for summoning your pets. Something I recommend pretty much at all times. Very, very good skill. Does a lot of damage. Summons pets very quickly. You don't have to worry about anything. And then we got Henrichten. This is another, or Heinrichten, I don't know. This is another really, really good skill. Basically, based on how many pets you currently have active, you get uh, a bunch of buffs. Uh, attack plus 50% is pretty crazy just in general. But you also get a critical hit rate boost if you somehow don't have 100%. You get free supplementary damage on hit if you have three pets active. And if you have all four pets active, you also get invincibility for a short period of time. And those are two of the best possible buffs in the entire game. Invincibility is really nice. Make sure you spam jump attacks with impunity. Supplementary damage just gives you a nice free 20% damage boost on everything. And uh, stacks with the supplementary damage uh, sigils. So that's nice to have as well. So this is just a really nice buff effect. You can activate it immediately after using strafe to get all of the benefits no matter what. So just a really good skill to have, something you probably should be running at all times on Fairy just to get the most benefit out of her uh, self-buffs and uh, damage here, and to help build SBA even faster. As far as her other four skills, they've got a couple general uses, but are not going to be as useful for the general kit most of the time. Uh, Blaze Guest Spend, I don't know how to pronounce this, but uh, this summons uh, two of your pets, and basically this does a frontal attack that inflicts defense bound and can remove one buff from the foe. The buff remove can be useful against certain enemies like the White Worm, but besides that, it's not going to be the most useful effect because the defense down is lower than the effect you get from your unique sigil already, so this is actually usually not worth running 99% of the time, so this is probably one of the worst skills you can run just because you'll get a more useful defense down just kind of passively just from having your pet summoned automatically with your unique sigil effect. Then we have Sikkim GG. This is a slow effect which can be useful sometimes depending on the situation, but it only summons one of your pets at a time, and... Uh, Slow can be an okay status effect to have, but it's not really something you should be focusing on as Fairy, who's more about building that SBA and stunning enemies that way rather than focusing on other forms of CC or status effects. So probably not something you're going to be using most of the time, but if you really do need a slow, if you really do need an extra way to CC or stunlock the enemy, this is an option. It does give you another way to kind of stun enemies as Fairy while you're waiting for your SBA to come up or something like that, so it is an option to consider. Benediction is kind of a healing buff that affects your allies. It grants regen and uh, ten, uh, defense and attack to everyone based on how many pets are on the field, which is okay. It's an alright buff, but most people do not need to worry too much about having a 10-20% to 20 defense buff, and the 20% attack buff is usually not going to be that useful for most party members either, and the regen is 
kind of not great with everyone running Potion Hoarder. So it's okay to run this sometimes, but you need like a highly specific team that knows they're taking advantage of it. Most of the time, I don't really recommend this over your other abilities that are just going to offer much more utility and usefulness just in general. And finally, we have Pendle. This will summon some pets and uh, basically allow all your pets to remain on the battlefield while kind of whisking you backwards to safety. And that's okay as an effect, but you don't really need it, especially when you have built-in invincibility, built-in stout heart as well. So this could be useful in some situations to kind of dodge attacks while uh, keeping your pets active or summoning some pets, but most of the time, I don't really see this being the most useful ability. But... It is an option to consider, at the very least. So just in general, I recommend these four skills. I think they're going to be the, the most useful of use of damage and just general utility. Even if you're not running buffs for the entire team, you still got some debuffs with your pets just being active at all times. And uh, you have a really, really good self-buffs here with Stout Heart, Invincibility, Supplementary Damage, stuff like that, at the very least. So let's briefly talk about Masteries. My current Overmasteries do not have any skill cap damage up because skills are a little bit less important on Fairy. You're not using them as often as for damage and... Uh, Normal attacks make up the bulk of your damage as fairy, especially if you're spamming a jump attack and all that stuff very often. So when I got when I saw the overmasters that gave me a perfect normal cap up 20% and critical hit rate up 20%, I just ended up keeping it because I figured it would just be the best kind of option here in general. Healing cap up doesn't really do anything, but it's just kind of there. And then attack up 700, I guess that's pretty nice. Makes sure you're hitting those caps a little bit easier as well. Ideally, you can get skill damage cap up along with this as well because it will give you a damage boost at the very least on your skills that you actually do use for damage. Because you do use a few, but normal attack damage cap up and critical hit rate up 20% are definitely going to be the most important things to look out for here on Fairy, which is kind of the same with a lot of other characters in general. But skill damage, I would say, is a little bit less important on her, but it's still something important, something to shoot for if you can find it. Stun damage up could be really nice as well to uh, get link attacks more often to make sure you can summon your pets a little bit easier as well, so that's an option to consider also. And then, obviously, SBA damage cap up might actually be pretty good on her just because you're spamming SBA so often. So that could be an option to consider as well and something you might want to look out for if you can conveniently fit it into any of your sets here. I think that's going to cover it for a general setup. Let's take a look at some practical gameplay application and some really funny and fast fights. As per usual, here's your spoiler warning on post-game, late-game raids if you are worried about that. Let's get into it. So I'm just going to show off a couple examples of how insane this SBA build is and how easily you can just optimize it if you know what you're doing here. So I start things off, I use Strafe immediately to activate my pets. I use my buffs to make sure I have those active. Then it's just kind of immediately go into Jump Spam. I activate my uh, other art as well to get as much damage as I can while I'm doing this. And I'm already off to a start of over 56% SBA. Now there's another fairy in this room, and that can kind of showcase the value of running uplift versus not running uplift, because you can see how much quicker I'm building it than the other fairy, who I am nearly certain does not have uplift, otherwise they would have been able to build it almost as fast as me. And you can see I'm already at, I'm already at a 91%, we're only like 30 seconds into the fight. And I already get it up here, but I decided to wait just, actually no, I activated instantly, because I'm just a, that much of a gamer. Go ahead and activate SBA, he's already in overdrive, want to make sure that we... Uh, can phase skip this and maybe break overdrive really quickly. He's kind of stun locked. The other fairy does get their SBA in time because of the 10% from me. And we're able to immediately break P at A at, uh, so yeah, 40 seconds into the fight, basically. Already about 50% thanks to the uh, just insane SBA build. The other two allies that I have on my team here also already have their SBA now because of that and just being able to constantly attack and have the enemy stun locked. So as soon as he gets back up, they can do a 2-2 as well and immediately just kind of SBA chain again here before the elemental shift goes off, and uh, yeah, they're just going to town here. This is one of the most broken and effective strategies in the entire game. SBA does pause the actual in-game timer, so it's stuck at 59.09 right now, so uh, in-game timer doesn't tell the entire story here. This is probably closer to like a two-minute strategy than like a one-minute strategy, but it's still really just insane that you're just able to do this at all. A certain strategies are probably able to just completely speedrun this. I'm already at 100% SBA gauge again, by the way, so I go ahead and activate that one more time, because why not? I might as well. So I just activate it one more time, I, I just get a little bit more damage to unlock them a little bit longer here and make sure we get them to that health range where uh, we're able to just kind of end the fight extremely quickly here. Uh, the other fairy gets theirs up really quickly after that, and uh, yeah, once you get him under 10% he goes into his enrage phase where he starts charging his attacks, so even if he was able to actually get to the middle of the field that was all that is all he is going to be doing. Which I think he does actually get the opportunity to jump there with 1% left, so we're a little bit, we're, we didn't get the sub 1 a minute run here, so... I guess we're jobbers, but you can just kind of see there, he wasn't able to do anything the entire fight. And the fact that this is just so free and simple with basically any kind of strategy is just absolutely absurd. And uh, 
I still can't believe this character is just able to do this right now. I would not be surprised this got changed in a patch because it is really, really dumb. And you're able to do this in just most other fights as well. Like, even the evil black worm, I was able to do this. With our Charlotta, like, immediately dying here. Well, not immediately, but dying very, very soon into the fight. I immediately just kind of go in here. I take advantage of the invincibility and my uh, buffs here to just kind of go in, start immediately building up SBA. The Charlotta is dead with 1% SBA. doesn't matter. I'm already at 50%. Uh, the Charlotte also doesn't know how to match for some reason. doesn't matter. I'm already at 65%, at 70%, 74%, 77%, uh, 79%. I do have to dodge some attacks here. I get invincibility out of dodging. I make sure I stay out of the slow field so I don't have to deal with that. Uh, kind of dodge around since I'm already close to 100% anyway. And I'm trying to build SBA before he goes into his kind of enraged attack here where he flies up into the air. So uh, we're just kind of working on that. And I'm at... 95% here, I get in a little bit more range here, get it to 99, and then I'm able to get my SBA off just in time before he goes into what is probably going to be his enrage attack here. Uh, get an SBA off this is going to allow us to stun lock him and get him out of overdrive here really, really fast. And uh, despite the fact that the EO is not quite at 100%, just kind of with the stun timing here, uh, EO is able to get close enough to kind of SBA chain after this. And since we're, we can chain this out of a break, we have a little bit of extra free time here to uh, go into that SBA. And, uh, yeah, we're able to just kind of stun long the evil Black Worm, too, because of this, even without the Charlotte doing much. And uh, it just kind of goes to show the power of SBA and how strong it can be if you are able to take advantage of it in these fights. It's already at 10%, and uh, the Jita uses theirs now, and uh, the fight's basically over. And if you want to hear my thoughts on it, well... There is no way. There is no way. And I think that's really all there is to say. It's just really that simple and easy. I can't believe this character exists in the game as they do right now. Uh, I'll show off one more P at A fight with that group I was with earlier. It's uh really is just this simple. It was just kind of activating your pets, activating your buffs, spamming your uh, jump attack, and just using SBA as kind of the optimal strategy with the character to get the most benefit out of her. It's... It's kind of absurd, honestly. I would not be surprised this got changed. I've already said that, but yeah. If the strategy kind of stays at it is right now, which is really kind of an overtuned and really spammable SBA kind of stun strategy. Fairy's used in a lot of speed kills because of how strong the strategy is as far as uh, in-game timer speed kills, at least. Now, I think RTA speed kills might be a little bit different just because of not being able to stop the timer with SBA, but the fact that you're able to stop the timer with SBA is still kind of absurd and broken just in general, and... uh it is really funny that you're able to do it. So, general strategy, though, is really just uh, not too much different than what you've seen. It's just kind of spamming the uh, jump attacks over and over and uh, just spamming SBA when you have it. This is why Uplift's really good. You're able to uh, build SBA really quickly and uh, just go to town on all these enemies without too much issue at all, which is absolutely absurd. It doesn't even matter how strong the enemy is really right now. You're able to still kind of kill them really quickly with... Uh, just kind of the abilities you have, which is pretty insane and uh, pretty broken. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some type of fundamental balance change in the future to nerf SBA a little bit or something like that, because right now this is definitely really strong, and her general intended playstyle with Onslaught is just not very good right now, which is a little bit unfortunate. So if this does get changed in the future and this does get outdated, I do apologize for that. But for now, this is a really strong strategy, as I've said, and uh, yeah, one of the best strategies you can use online right now just in general. I do think that is going to cover it mostly for this guide video. I don't really know what else to say about this. It's just really fun, really broken, and uh, something a lot of people are abusing right now. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching this guide video. I do appreciate all of the support as per usual. Please look forward to all of my future character guides. If you did enjoy and learn something from this video, do be sure to like, comment, and subscribe as well. And I would love you forever if you did. Feel free to leave any feedback in the comments on how I can improve these further, and uh, look forward to all my future guides. As per usual, once again, thank you all so much for the support. Have a wonderful and blessed day.